before we actually get into presenting scripts and working on these scripts, there's a other few other things I want to go over with everybody to help us. And one of them is word analogies. Okay, so if everybody looks at page 10, I've got this numbered page here. And I want to stop and think about analogies that we use because analogies are very powerful. And as I'm talking to some of the best service advisors that, that I know in the whole country, some of the most successful, I've picked their brains and I've said, okay, what are some of your best analogies? So I want you guys to also think about it and then we're going to share with each other. And on your sheet here, what you want to do is you want to list out, we're going to list out and share some of the best analogies that we've used before. And, um, you know, um, I'm trying to think of the crystal. She's not here today, but in a whole nother class, she used a great analogy. And I'll give you guys an example, okay? Um, have you ever been in a situation to where um, you're, you've PMI in a car and you notice that the left front strut is leaking, but the right front strut is not leaking? Have you, who's, who's, who's seen that before? Okay, great. So sometimes the customer doesn't understand why they have to change them both because we're recommending both, correct? We recommend both the front struts because we want to do them in sets. And so what's a good analogy that a lot of you guys probably have used in the past when you're describing that to a customer? Anybody? No? Okay. So here's what I've used in the past and what I've seen be successful is describing it to the customer that it'd be kind of like having one old shoe and one new shoe on right? One old shoe that's broken in and worn out a little bit and the other shoe is brand new and it's stiffer and firmer, right? And so that's a good analogy that you can use with a customer when you're describing why they need to replace both the front struts, okay? So you could write that down on number one is one old shoe, one new shoe when you're talking about struts. writing it down with you all right so Steve could you share with us an analogy that you've used in the past when you're talking with a customer or, or selling any service repair work I've also used like for, for code uh, for, like if customers went to, uh, say, a parts store and they got a code, I have told them that uh, they give you the code like at the top of a Christmas tree. And then you have to go to the top of that Christmas tree and start oh, diagnosing so why that general code is up there. Okay, so you're describing it to them like if one light bulb's out, and the, none of the lights light up. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Well, uh, like uh, a lot of our customers here in Crystal will go to like O'Reilly's and they'll give them like a general a free code pool. Yeah, and that usually their stuff will only give them like what it could be. You know, then then that's where we, where we can start, and then uh, like go down and check all the. Uh, components that go with that code to find out which one is okay. actually but how do you how do you use the analogy and comparing it to a christmas tree that's the part i'm curious the code that they got at o'reilly is like the top of the uh components like a general uh say an egl code or something yeah you know they give them uh, a c C349 or something, and that that means um, say that that goes to a single system and mm -hmm. gives you a starting point to to like the uh, for the tech to start. Okay, like what goes with all all that C349 code or whatever it is? So then you have to start diagnosing. Okay, is it 
this and go down one side of the tree. Okay, that's all good. You go down here. Oh, here we go. Huh? Good. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. So that's one. <laughs> that's, <laughs> well, you know, it means some people might get it better than I do. I mean, but that's okay. I mean, but I just appreciate you sharing. And, um, you know, and it, you know, obviously it works for you, how you're doing yours over there. I was just wondering how you were connecting those dots for the customer. And so I'm thankful that you, you shared that. Now what I, so that's an interesting one. So with check engine lights and selling diagnostics, you know, I, I don't, on that one, I don't think I use any type of analogy. I do tell them that, um, you know, kind of like what Steve's talking about that, you know, we have a fault code that gives us a general area of the failure on the vehicle. Um, but however, what the technician needs to do now is he needs to go through a flow chart, kind of a process of elimination to pinpoint the actual cause of your engine light illuminating. Um, so good, but thanks for sharing. <clears throat> How about you, Gene? Is there a particular analogy you've used in the past? I was thinking there's a couple of them with dry wine related things. Um, first one would be um, like all the drive system. We didn't really do tires back where I was came from in Ohio, but mm -hmm. we saw a lot of drive line transmission and transfer case issues. Uh, we had a lot of complaints on binding up, transfer case binding up. And that's under, it's related to the tires being mismatched. And it's almost like saying like it's twisted like a pretzel. And then they kind of light bulb comes on for the customer because they're, they're wondering why you're not wanting to charge them you know, $2,500 for a transfer case when it really doesn't need it. Or I was also thinking like a wheel bearing situation in the front. Uh, we did a lot of front wheel drive, anything basically front wheel drive with hub bearings on it. Um, I've seen over the years, if you put one on, one will go bad right after the other. So that's, I just kind of tell people, you know, it's coming. It's going to be right behind it. You better just replace both of them with the mileage and everything on it. So. Okay. And so do you use an analogy when you're doing that, when you're letting them know, hey, you know, you should go ahead and just get both of them done because it's like, and you can. On the, on the wheel bearings, I, I did just based off the history and the how common it was all the time. Okay. With the, the transfer case was, they don't understand. Twisted. Yeah, they don't. They just never understood it until you told them like that, because it really, it literally just binds up really bad when you don't, I'm sure you guys experienced that before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's, uh, that's the only way they really got it over there at the shops. Okay, good. Well, thanks for sharing yours. I like the binding up kind of like twisting a pretzel. I do like that. So if you're describing that particular failure to a customer, how about you, Nick? Is there any... Uh, good analogies and technicians use analogies too because they're constantly you know for technicians they have to kind of sell it to the advisor before the advisor can go sell it to the customer and so they they they're basically describing the failure to the advisor too so have you used anything nick oh you got your mic i thought i unmuted that sorry it's all right um so yeah, I've used it in regards to the coolant, whereas as it gets old, it starts to break down and it can con conduct or store electricity like a battery. Okay. Electrolysis, you know, even with interior components. Okay, so over time it breaks down and explain that again. It can conduct or store electricity like a battery. And then what does that electricity do to the, your components? It starts to eat away at various metals, aluminum, steel, iron. Okay. And I'm writing this down. And hopefully everybody else is too, because that's a, to me, that one's very, very valuable. And it's one we can all put into our, our toolbox to use later on. So if we ever have a situation like that, and it could be just as simple as a, um, a coolant flush due to maintenance repairs, or it could be a giant repair. Maybe you're explaining to a customer they have some metal within the system that's been corroded uh, as a result of poor antifreeze, and you're just describing to them, explaining to them why it happened. So I really love that one. Over time, as coolant breaks down, um, 
it can actually start to conduct and store electricity kind of like a battery and what that does is it eats away at the metal components in the system the met, uh, any metals aluminum steel and so forth so very good any other ones nick uh not at the top of my head no okay i'll share one real quick since nick got onto the cool onto antifreeze or coolant you know coolant's also a rust prohibitor and you know it can withstand temperatures below freezing kind of like what frankie like alcohol like alcohol now most customers have put probably a lot of people on here we've taken a bottle of vodka and we put it in the freezer right to makes the drinks colder when we pour a drink or tequila or you know a hot dam or fireball or something like that you put it in the freezer and guess what happens it's still a liquid and so that you can explain that to a customer too that's another analogy you know your antifreeze you know it's it was kind of like a bottle of liquor you can put it in the freezer and it won't it won't turn into like an ice cube on you and your antifreeze has those same properties to make sure that you know you it doesn't freeze up inside of your system and so that's another one is a, a bottle of liquor or alcohol when you're talking about coolant i mean i've sold a lot of coolant flushes that way i talk I always talk to them about it really has two main purposes and i didn't even really realize what nick was sharing in all my years so you learn something that's what i love about this business you learn something new every day you all might have known but for me that's kind of new information that it can do that and operate like a battery and start to break down your metal that's another reason why outside of the fact that it's a it prohibits rust this is why we don't use just water if we just poured water in there it would rust um, so it's a rust prohibitor in there and it won't freeze kind of like a bottle of alcohol you put in the freezer and so then that like um, to what Gene said that light bulb for the customer goes off and then the next thing coming out of their mouth is go ahead and do it once they understand your odds goes way up so Denise do you have any analogies that you've used in the past you could share we, we can't hear you can you move in a little closer can to you hear me now that's better yep mm -hmm. Please, I... lost you again so, mm -hmm. can you hear me now? barely but yeah turn my deal up to all right go ahead I, I don't can you guys hear no nah, we, we can now so it's wherever your mic is and with your laptop I think some of them you have to be almost right in front to pick up your voice Now that right there, wherever you, where you are, right there, we could hear it. Right here. Yep. Perfect. All right. Cool. Um. So with brakes and rotors, we, I'll say you don't want to put something new on something old. That's why we do brake pads and rotors. Uh, when we get into like the diagnosing, uh, check engine lights. I use a blood work, uh, kind of analogy. So, of uh, the reason why we have to test the, the check engine light is because kind of like a. Uh, doing blood work when you have something wrong with you and they do blood work they're trying to figure out what's wrong with you that's what we're basically doing blood work on a car love it i love it those are great analogies and then the customer just kind of gets it yeah you know because what they don't get is well we're gonna have to run some diagnostics on there what the heck is that right to the to a regular normal person yeah we don't say diagnostic we just say testing at that point yep most people don't know what a diagnostic is right good i love those thank you for sharing mm -hmm. um how about you frankie any good analogies i've never actually learned any analogies through the years uh i know when i was at the parts store i would use to describe ball joints as your kneecaps okay that's a good one that's a good one i mean because what we're trying to do the whole idea behind these because when we get into that presentation portion we start talking about that system 
sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes it makes sense to talk about analogies to get that customer light bulb to go off. Oh, I understand. How about you, Eli? Did you already say the shoes thing? Yeah, but you could re-say it. You probably okay. say it better than me. I know. I mean, Chloe and I had the same answer last time when on the last class, and it was it's the it's it's anytime tires, brakes, or shocks and struts. They always want to do. Can I just do the one side? I'm like, well, you know, I mean, you don't really buy a pair of shoes out of out of a set or a pair. It's just like the same thing. I always describe to them. It's the same thing as buying a pair of shoes. You buy a pair of shocks. You buy a pair of rotors. Um, and most people, as soon as you say it, they get it right away. And they're like, oh, okay, I get it. Yep. Good, good. So let's, and then Jeff, how about you? Jeff, could you, could you have a mic over there? I see you're in your car. I know you're going on a hunting trip. Good to see you, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my, yeah this I would be a really good webinar good. for, uh, for my, uh, one of my service writers. Um, good. I, <laughs> I get calls, but I, uh, you know, I do my best to uh, to get the customer in the door. And uh, uh, once they're in the door, my service writers pretty much take care of it. I, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't really, I can't really think of anything. That's okay. Uh, I'm taking notes, and I, uh, I, and I want him to watch this and take notes too. Yes, sir. It's a, it's an excellent, uh, excellent webinar. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. You will get a copy of it as well so you can share with your team. Great. Thank you. You bet. So, Scott, are you available? Scott? No? Okay. All right. So, I'm going to share some, some more analogies because these things are powerful. And the cool part is, is, you know, the whole idea of bringing this many people together is because we can share with each other. Like I picked up a couple of really good ones from each other that now I'm going to keep in my wheelhouse for my own future benefit from when I'm dealing with my customers or I'm teaching class. And so I've got some notes here and I want to share some. Okay. Carbon buildup. We face this a lot. You know, Mr. Customer, um, we really need to get in there and run a fuel system cleaner through your vehicle. You've got a lot of carbon buildup. Um, carbon buildup, it's kind of like tar. When it's cool, it gets flaky and brittle. When it's hot, it kind of gets sticky and gooey. Okay, so you can liken it to tar. And then they understand you can also, a lot of our customers have chimneys. You know, your carbon buildup is really just a byproduct of a combustion engine. And periodically, you need to clean out all that carbon and get it out of the system, just like cleaning the soot out of your chimney. They get it, they understand because they probably had to clean their chimneys before so they can correlate those two together and that light bulb goes off. Um, that's one, hopefully you guys like. Um, okay, this is one for the dreaded rechecks. We hate rechecks, we hate comebacks, right? Boy, Brian, I was just in here three weeks ago and now, uh, now I hear this noise that I didn't have before. Okay, and what, you know, what happened? Why didn't you guys tell me about it? And I'll use the light bulb actually. I'll say, well, it's kind of like this, Mr. Jones. If I come over to your home for dinner, and you invite me over, I come over and I go use the restroom. I walk in the bathroom and I hit the light switch and the bulb goes out, right? I mean, I didn't make the bulb go out and it was good a thousand times before that. It's just so happens, you know, there's a millisecond between the time a part is good to the time it fails. And so apparently when we had your vehicle here three weeks ago, one of two things happened. Either it hadn't failed yet or my technician just was unable to discover that. We just didn't see it, because certainly if I would have, if we were aware of it, I'd have brought it to your attention and we would have presented it to you then. Uh, but again, it's just like walking in a room and turning on that switch, that bulb goes out. There's no way that anybody could know that it was gonna go out, okay? And 
you know, it's just one of those things that it's good all the way up until the point that it's not. And it happens just that fast. And when I explain that to a customer like that with the light bulb going out, because I think that's probably happened to everybody in the world at least one time where you go in the room, you hit the switch and the bulb goes out on you. But you didn't do anything to cause that. And you had no way of knowing that it was going to go out right there. And that helps people to understand if they have a failure not far behind a repair you you did at your shop um, and that helps people get it but I always do kind of uh, I also accept the fact that it's potentially could have been there and that we just didn't not, we just didn't catch it we didn't find it we didn't detect it and I do apologize but I also leave open the door that let's not forget the fact that it could be just a brand new failure that there's no way that we could have found it before and that's when I'll use that light bulb going out um, analogy um, I sometimes I'll talk about unmasking an existing condition okay so when I'm talking about you service a transmission and now that it slips okay and so you have to sometimes I use the analogy of unmasking because it was already there it already was like that we just couldn't we just unmasked that condition by doing the service, which is something that you always want to be careful of with transmission services, especially if they're having shifting issues already. And it's probably more in Gene's wheelhouse than anybody on transmissions. But I know that being able to describe that and explain it to a customer like that has got me out of the doghouse before. And so I just wanted to share that one. Um, Anybody ever use the analogy, it's like a milkshake? I see heads moving. So that's what happens when you get intermix. You know, oil mixes with uh, coolant, you know, uh, and uh, some gaskets fell, they erode away and allows them to intermix and it's kind of like a milkshake, right? I've had, I've heard one of the best person I've ever seen sell uh, coolant flushes. He would, <laughs> now this is, this, this analogy is particular to, to Georgia. And it's going to happen in, 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 so this one might not work for everybody, but there's a river in Georgia that's known for just being completely nasty. It's not one you want to fish out of nor swim in. It's the Chattahoochee River. And so anytime he was describing something really nasty in terms of fluid condition, he would compare it to the Chattahoochee, you know? And so that customers would laugh about it. They would get it. They understood. And I thought that that was a great use of an analogy. Now today with today's vehicles, they're very complicated. Um, and they have to be reflashed and reprogrammed. Kind of like what, Nick? I see Denise said something. I'm gonna let Nick tell us. What, what could you compare it to that's a common thing that everybody uses? not too sure okay who could help him what about these what about these things don't they have to be updated um your computer right there's software and so just like on your phone or your computer occasionally it's going to need an update and your software in your car is no different now the customer gets it because everybody nowadays just about owns a smartphone and they understand that they get updates all the time. Well, what the heck does an update do? Well, now when we're talking about flashing a car, reprogramming a car, you know, we can compare it to a software on a laptop, a computer, or a phone. 